Hello, you know who it is. It's Mr. Schwanekamp. Welcome back. Today we are dealing with exponentials. So we know what that graph looked like yesterday. Remember what that looked like? Started off slow and then kind of took off exponential growth. Then we're going to deal with exponential decay, which is kind of the opposite. Instead of starting off and going up, it's going to start really high and then kind of flatten out at the bottom. So kind of like, like a curvy letter L, I guess. I don't know. That's not great, but that's the best I'm going to give for you today. Uh, so exponential growth and decay, we're going to understand the difference between the two, and we are going to understand them applied to story problems. So these have a lot of application in the real world. We'll kind of look to see what that looks like. Uh, if you ever want to buy a car or buy a house or have money, then you need to understand exponential growth and how it relates to those items. So that's what we're going to deal with today. Might seem kind of scary. It's not too bad. All right. Having a calculator would be great. If you don't have a calculator at home, uh, Desmos.com is a great place to be. I would not download the Desmos app on your phone. Um, it's better than just trying to like use your iPhone sideways. It's garbage. Don't use your iPhone calculator app. Download something else uh, to try to figure this out. All right, here we go. Let's try it. Here we go. Exponential growth. Uh, every time you do exponential growth or exponential decay, really, they're both kind of the same formula. It is this guy right here. Whoa, my screen flipped upside down. There we go. All right, exponential growth looks like this. A equals P times 1 plus R to the T. All right, so let's talk about each thing. We've got this A first. The A here, that is your ending amount. How much are you going to end up with in the situation? How much money? How many insects? How many rabbits? Whatever the problem stands for. Uh, the A is going to be the ending amount. The P here stands for the principal. Okay, when we talk about principal here, it is your starting amount. Principal is a word you'll hear often, uh, but principal is the starting amount. The one is always going to be a one. Think of that one as like 100%. That's what that one represents. Uh, and we'll kind of show you some different aspects of that, but that one does represent 100%. You've got an R. The R in the problem is your rate. And when you deal with a rate, it always needs to be written as a decimal. So if it's been a minute since you've changed stuff back and forth, remember 3%. To make a percent a decimal, you need to move the decimal spot two places. So 3%, when we do these problems, fill it in as 0 0.03. All right, so again, if you had like 62.5%, you would move it one two, it would be 0.625%. So just be aware of that. Make sure you write the rate as a decimal. And then the T is going to stand for time. T is time, just kind of depends on whether it's years or months based on the problem, based on your growth rate, uh, but T is time. All right, that's it. And, and if you got that, it's just a matter of plugging into your formula and understand what's going on. So in 2000, the cost of tuition at Indiana State University was $12,000. Each year, tuition rises 5%. Find the cost of the tuition today. All right, so in the year 2000, we are going to today, and so you might be watching this video in the future, which is crazy right now. We are in the year 2020, so just assume that in this case, our T is going to be 20 for this problem. All right, so we're trying to find the cost of tuition at Indiana State. It was 12000 How much does it cost today? We've got a 5% increase every year. So an ex exponential growth, the problem is going to build like this. Okay, so make sure we understand what this thing looks like. It is an exponential growth problem. It's going to start off flat and then really take off. So let's set this thing up. It is going to grow. College becomes more and more. That's why this is a growth problem. So A equals P times 1 plus R T. What is my A? Well, A is my, my ending amount. That's what I'm looking for. I'm trying to find the cost of the tuition today. So that's what I'm looking for. P is my starting amount. So in this case, my P is 12000 because that's how much it costs uh, in the year 2000. Uh, R, it was 5%, but we're not going to write 5%. We're going to write 0 0.05. We're going to move that decimal one, two spots, 0 0.05. And then my T, like I said here, that T is 20 because we're going from the year 2000 to 2020. All right, so let's set up the problem. 
my A is going to be equal to my principal times 1 plus 0 0.05. So understand what this is. The 1 represents 100% because it's always going to be at least 100%. It's always going to be the amount it started with. And then each year, we're going to add 0.05%. That, that basically is what's going on there. And then T is to the 20th power. Then all you got to do is type it into your calculator. So this is my calculator. Uh, this program costs some money. So it's just a TI uh, graphing calculator uh, program. That's what I'm using here. 12,000 times 1 plus 0 0.05. Close that parentheses. I want to go to a power, so I'm using that button right there. I'm going to raise it to the 12th power. Hit enter. Boom, $21,550.28. We're dealing with money, so I always like going to, to pennies. $21,550.28. And 28 cents. There we go. I had to Google it just so I could see uh, what the actual answer was. Uh, out of state tuition was 19,836. What did we say? We thought it was going to be 21,000. So it didn't quite grow that much. Um, maybe two years ago it was probably a little bit better, but you can see that that's a pretty accurate estimate here. Uh, I made up this problem many, many years ago. So. There we go. Number two, the population of Winnemucca. I don't, I don't know how to say that. We're going to go with that one. That city in Nevada in 2011 was 6,191 people. Each year, the population is expected to increase by 8.5%. What is the population in the year 2020? Hey, guess what? It's 2020. All right. So 2020, 2011, my T is going to be nine because nine years have gone by. It was this amount, so that's going to be my principal. That's what I started with. My rate, it's 8.5%. But remember, if it's 8.5%, we got to move that decimal two spots, so it's really 0 0.085. My T, my P, my R, and obviously I'm looking for my ending amount. We could get more creative with these problems in the future to maybe find something besides A. But for what we're doing right now, we haven't learned a lot yet. We're going to solve for A in most of these problems. So A is going to be equal to 6,191. One, because we're growing, plus 0.085% every year. So I'm going 1.085 every year. And my T is going to be 9. Type that thing in 6,191. Parentheses, 1 plus 0.085. Close it to the ninth power. Hit enter. 1291 or 12901, 12,901.15 people. Uh, we don't probably have 0.15 people, but we're going to leave it that way anyways. So the city almost doubled in size. We only grew 8% a year, but in nine years, growing 8% a year, uh, we basically we more than doubled the amount of people. So kind of interesting how exponential growth works. It keeps growing and growing and growing and grows a little bit faster than you think. So far, we've dealt with exponential growth. Now we're going to deal with exponential decay. And so decay, when you hear that word, instead of these graphs that look like this, we're going to do the opposite of that. And that is going to look like this instead. Exponential decay happens when the thing that is being raised to a power is a number less than one. If that number is less than one, then it's going to have this downward growth uh, equation. So it's going to look like this. So just be aware of that. Other than that, the problem is the same. A new car, a new car costs twenty-three thousand dollars. All right, so that's going to be my principal. I'm guessing that's my starting amount, twenty-three thousand dollars. The value decreases when you buy a car. It's going to become less and less money each year. It's not. A, it's. It gets worn out. By 15%, ooh, that's a lot, each year. So my rate, move it two spots, so boom, boom, 0.15. How much will the car be worth in seven years? So we're trying to find our ending amount when our T is seven. And so really, the only difference between this problem and the last problem is this thing. Oh, my amount is going down. It is not exponential growth anymore, it's exponential decay. And so instead of one plus, 0 0.0 or 1 plus something, it's going to be 1 minus 0.15. My T is 7. So basically, understand what this is. This 1 minus 
I am only getting 85%. That's what that represents. 100% minus 15%. Each year, the car is only going to be worth 85% as much as it was the year before. That's what that's doing there. Again, if it's a number less than 100%, it's going to be decreasing. So 23,000. Parentheses, 1 minus 0.15. Obviously, you could just type in 0.85 there as well. To the seventh power. So in seven years, our $23,000 car is now only worth $7,373.27. So my car became worth a whole lot less very quickly. It makes me sad. I wish cars always kept the same value. It would be easier to sell again. Let's do another one. You drink a Mountain Dew with 1,200 milligrams of caffeine. So you get that sugar buzz, that caffeine right away. Uh, each hour, the amount of caffeine in your system decreases by 8.5%. How much caffeine is in your system after two hours? So you drink the Mountain Dew, you get the caffeine. Two hours later, are you going to have more or less caffeine in your system than at the start? Hopefully, you recognize that you're going to have less caffeine in your system. So because of that, it is this equation. A, it's an exponential decay equation. This guy right here, one minus RT. We've got 1200, or I'm sorry, 120 is my P. My rate is 0.8, or I'm sorry, 0 0.085, because I'm decreasing 8.5% each hour. And that is an hour, so that's why my T is going to be two. And to do all that, we're going to find our A. Let's type it in, 120. Parentheses, 1 minus 0 0.085 to the second power after two hours instead of 120 milligrams. Now I've only got 100.467. So 100.47 milligrams of caffeine left. So that, that Mountain Dew is wearing off pretty quickly. Hopefully you're getting the feel for this. It's pretty much the same thing every time. Um, we'll do a couple more. So on the back side here, I'm not telling you, hey, this is exponential growth through decay. We're just going to make that distinction. Your other older brother bought a used Toyota Corolla for $5,500 $5, back in 2011. Since then, the value of the car has been depreciating. Okay, depreciating at a rate of 12% per year. If you've not seen that word before, depreciate means to go down. It is going down. Uh, how much is the car worth today? So if the car is depreciating, is that an exponential growth or exponential decay problem? It's decay. So let's set that up. We're going to find my amount. The car started at 5,500, one minus 12%, so 0.12, and we're going to raise it to a power, so my power is going to be the time. We started in 2011, since this year is 2020, my year, or my T is going to be nine. Take it, type it into your calculator, get an answer. 5,500, one minus 0.12, so it's going to be 0.88, 88% of my car value is going to hold from year to year, nine years. $1,740.63. Boom. That is how much my car is going to be worth. It's definitely going down in price. Your grandfather bought a 67 Ford Mustang in 1967. Since, since that year, the value of the car has been appreciating. Appreciating. At a rate of 8% per year. If you pay $2,000 for the car, how much is it worth today? And so a little bit different of a problem here. It's different than these two. Your brother bought the car. He's going to be driving it every day. It's a Toyota Corolla. It's going to go down in price. Well, this one, your grandfather bought this 67 Ford Mustang. If it's going up $2,000 a, a year, I'm guessing he's not driving it a lot. It is sitting in his garage. It's now just a cool collector car instead of something that he's driven the wheels off of. So because of that word appreciating, the price is going up. And so it is an, a plus value there. So that is my formula. Uh, my P is two grand, started off with 2,000, one plus. My rate is 0 0.08 because it's 8% per year. My time is going to be ooh, 1967, uh, 2020 minus 1967. I don't want to do that math in my brain. Oh, it's 53 years. Okay, so my time is 53 years. So that $2,000 car when he bought it, not very expensive when he bought it, by now, 53 years later, that car is going to be worth Woo, I want to have that car. $118,000, $118,165.40 .40, $5. Definitely the price of that car has gone up, but it's probably pretty realistic. I bet you can buy a Ford Mustang in the $120,000 range uh, if it's the right kind of car in the right kind of condition. 
Last question. The current population of bald eagles is 793. They are headed towards extinction at a rate of 8% per year. What will the bald eagle uh, population be in five years? Kind of a sad problem. Actually, I think bald eagles are starting to bounce back a little bit. So we're uh, hopefully this is not a true statement, but let's see. Hopefully, I think I feel like this is made up. I got to Google this one afterwards just to make sure. <laughs> sad about my bald eagles. All right. So if we're headed towards extinction, is this a growth or a decay problem? Hopefully you realize it is a decay problem. We're getting smaller and smaller. We're doing five years. My population is 793. One minus my rate is 8%. So we're going to go 0.08. Ah, we don't need to know about Indiana State. Uh, 793. Parentheses, one minus 0 0.08. We're getting less each year. We're raising it to the fifth power. In five years, we're only going to have 522. We'll, we'll round it up to 523 eagles left. Be strong, eagles. See if you can hold on. Good news, I Googled it. Uh, in the past, there were only 417 in 1963, so not a many bald eagles in, in that year. Now there are over 9,700 nesting pairs of bald eagles in the United States. I don't know what that means, but it seems better than our sad story of only 523 eagles. So good news for us. The eagles are, are, are strong. Hopefully, though, not to get distracted, you're understanding exponential growth and decay. Again, a pretty easy formula. You plug in. You hit some buttons and you, you can see how something is growing pretty quickly. You can see like on this one, that $2,000 car became uh, worth a whole lot more pretty quick. If you have questions, ask me. Good luck on your next one.